You'll see here that we have a time lapse off that deck and I'm really happy with it. It's nice and dramatic. If we make this a little bit larger here in bridge, we could see a single image and then use the down arrow key to step through, get a good idea of what it looks like. So we had a lot of good evolution on the clouds and the sun was moving through a bit, but all in all, I'm pretty happy. Let's bring that directly into an application called Adobe After Effects. It's included if you are an Adobe Creative Cloud member. Don't worry, later today, we'll take a look at using Adobe Photoshop to also make a time-lapse movie. Once you've launched After Effects, you can close the welcome screen and simply choose File, Import, File. Now navigate to the image sequence that you have. And in this case, I'm gonna grab the entire raw image sequence. I'll select the first image in that folder and note I could view it as a list to make sure that I've got the first one active. Choose the option to import the camera raw sequence. And if you think you might have a gap in the sequence from one or more missing images, just check the option for force alphabetical order and it will ignore any missing frames. When you're ready, click open and it will spin open the camera raw dialog. You're now accessing Adobe Camera Raw, but instead of using Bridge or Photoshop, you're using After Effects. Let's dial in this image. I'll start with an auto adjustment and then lift up the shadows a bit for the trees. Looks good. Let's recover the highlights on the sky a bit. And I'll add a little bit of clarity to pop things and bring out some rich vibrance. You may notice that I have a little bit of a problem here with the top image. After being out in the jungle for several days, it looks like I picked up a little bit of sensor dust, but a lot of times that also gets hidden as well. Remember, you can get rid of that using a tool like spot removal. And if you simply just get a nice small brush, zoom in a little bit and I can brush over that and it samples a new substance to replace. Don't worry too much about this, but this is the type of adjustment you could try to make inside a camera raw. Remember, you can set where it pulls from, and if it doesn't work for you, you can also just go back later in After Effects and clean that up, or learn your lesson and try to clean your sensor more. But on a two week trip through the jungle, it's gonna get a little dusty. All right, looking at that, feels pretty good. I'm gonna add a gradient adjustment to the top. Take that and pull it down a little. Adjust the exposure and the color temperature just a bit. We're making it a little cooler. Feels pretty good. Let's recover those highlights a bit and back off on the clarity so it doesn't boost it too much further. That feels pretty good across the board. Looking at the image, you might decide to jump on over to sharpening and put a little bit of details in. And of course, mask it with the option slider. But keep in mind that this is for the screen, so you're not sharpening to high print resolutions. I would recommend jumping into the HSL tab though, which will make it very simple for you to tweak colors. If the blues aren't blue enough, you can roll them to blue. Too much, put a little bit of that teal or aqua in, which actually I like here. It feels pretty good, I like the way that that looks. Let's go over to luminance and back down the intensity though slightly. And for the greens here, you note that we can go after those in the trees as well. Let's bop that down just a little bit and refine the exposure there and I'm satisfied. Now, when I click OK, that's gonna apply that to the entire sequence. You'll see it's actually there. We can now take that sequence and double click to load and just move the playhead in. Now it takes a second to process because this is a very high quality file, but you'll note it brought it in. If you want to change how that file behaves, right click and you could choose interpret footage main. This is where you'll assign a frame rate. I'm using 23.976, which is a very common rate for web video, and it can also be used for 24p. I'll press return and simply make a new composition by choosing composition, new composition. Let's choose an HDTV preset. There it is. 1080, 29.97, except the frame rate's off, so we'll switch that to 23.976, so it matches. Looks pretty good. We'll try 14 seconds as a duration for now and click OK. And I can simply drag the time-lapse movie into that project. All right, that comes across, but you'll notice a couple of things. 
it's running a little bit short. So let's adjust the composition settings and make that about 12 seconds, 12, zero, zero, and click OK. That works. And now we just need to scale the image. So if we twirl this down and adjust the transformation, I can adjust the scaling for that shot. In fact, we can set an initial scale and turn on the stopwatch for scale and position. You'll note how you can change how the shot is framed. Then as I get later in the shot, at the 12 second mark, we'll drag down there and give it just a second to redraw. You can see that progress bar there. And then we're going to scale in a little bit, pushing into the shot slightly and adjusting the position just a little bit so we frame up into the clouds a little bit more. Let's take a look at that shot there. There's the end and the beginning, and that looks pretty solid. All right, now that this is all done, we can save this, file, save, making sure to give it a name in the project. Let's call this time-lapse bay. Now that we are done and saved our work, let's make the video file. I'll choose composition, add to render queue. You'll see it puts it in the render queue area. Now you just need to choose a format. You could probably get by with best settings, but where it says output module, click on the word lossless. This dialog looks a little intimidating at first, but just choose your format. For example, I'm gonna go right to a QuickTime movie, but instead of doing this in the animation codec, I'll click format options, and I could choose from presets. For example, you can use things like the GoPro Cineform codec to hand off easily to Premiere Pro. And that works out quite nicely. I'll click OK, look over my settings, all looks good, and choose OK. And then simply choose a file name by clicking on the Output To section. This will bring up the new dialog and you can navigate to a folder where you want to store it. Let's just put it in here with my other saved files. Click Save, look over the project once more, and save it so you capture those changes, and then click the Render button. You'll now see that it renders the file and writes it to disk. Because we work directly with the RAW files, this is going to take a little bit of time, but it will create a very high quality file. If you want to learn more about time lapse, both the shooting and the post-processing, you'll find several courses available here on lynda.com.